Hello everyone. In this video, we are going to talk about heteroscedasticity and how to deal with it using weight the least square. First, uh, some theory about heteroscedasticity. When we derive the covariance matrix of beta, we are taking the expectation of the residual, which is x prime x inverse x prime epsilon. In the simple independent identically distributed case, which is ID, we will have only parameters on the diagonal of the sig sigma matrix, and each diagonal element will be the same. However, if we have heteroscedasticity, the, the, the variance for each observation will be different. Now, from here, we are going to assume that somehow we know the parameter, which is a pro pretty heroic assumption, but we are going to make anyway. The way we are going to deal with the heteroscedasticity case is we are going to decompose the sigma into two pieces, which is p and p prime. So in this case, essentially p will be the standard deviation of each observation lying on the diagonal. Its inverse will be just 1 over the standard deviation of each observation on the diagonal. And we will create a new variable called x tilde by pre-multiplying p inverse with respect to x and pre-multiplying y with p inverse which gives us y tilde. So what is the covariance structure of beta tilde? In this case we will have expectation of epsilon tilde, epsilon tilde prime which will be if we decompose it, will be p times epsilon, epsilon tilde times p inverse, which will be p prime inverse big sigma p inverse. Because we decompose the sigma in as p and p prime, this I uh, this will can can this will cancel out and become identity matrix. So when the covariance of the error turn vanish into identity matrix, it's obvious that we can also cancel the these two items out, which will leave essentially x prime x inverse as the co uh, as a variance of the beta hat. That means your or the weight to the least square is both consistent and and efficient. So so much for the theory. Now we are going to take a look at a real example of the of a IHD case. The data set is available on this link. This is a simulated data set with simple data generating process as y equals to 5x plus epsilon, where epsilon follows a IH in independent normal distribution with different standard deviation. In another word, we have the simplest possible IHD dataset. Now we are going to first regress the and uh, analyze the dataset using ORS method. So we can see from the regression result the coefficient is very close to the truth, which is five. But now we are going to weight the data by the inverse of the sigma, which in this case we know for sure. The way we we'll, we can do that is by using analytical weights, because we are weighting the inverse, so that's why we need to weight one minus one over sigma. From this two regression, we can find that the coefficient are very similar, however the T statistics is much more it's much larger when we using the IW 
when, when using WLS method. This is not surprising because according to previous theory, when we weight the the data properly, ORS will be the efficient estimator. However, in this example, we make the assumption that we know sigma. What if we do not know sigma? In that case, we need to estimate the epsilon i terms on the diagonal which is infeasible because we have uh, m parameters and at the most n equations. That means estimating the diagonal terms or items alone will consume all the data, which leaves no degree of freedom to estimate beta. To illustrate how this can go horribly wrong, I will go ahead and use the example analog to to the uh, WLS scheme. So we will do the regression and generate the residual from the ORS regression. Now we are going to generate the standard deviation of the E hat, which is an example analog of the sigma. And we are going to using inverse weight. So compare this to the true regression. Although their coefficients are very similar, the t statistics of the sample derived WRS is much, much larger than the true value, which means we screwed up the, the weighting scheme. To see why that's the case, let me show you the scatter plot of true sigma and its sample analog. If we get perfect estimation, we would expect to see sigma and sigma hat lying on the diagonal. And here, obviously, it's not the case. So this is a cautionary tale about using sample analog uh, when we actually need the true parameter. Thank you.